Hello, everyone. So it's a, it's a beautiful night despite the wind. So I think we are, let me emphasize here that I'm, let me express my gratitude for you all to be here, including me, express our gratitude to our, to our angel, okay, because without him, it will be very tough for us to be here. And so that's a proof that he works with us, each of your, each of our angel work, uh, work with us to bring us here to learn something about, the, about ourself. Okay, I think most of you, if I ask one of you about the, do you have a case about resilience that you know someone who fell down and then recovery, and now the, this person is much stronger than he was before. If I ask each of you about the thing, including myself as well, I can, I can give you a case. That's right? Yes. Okay. So resilience, it's a, it's a pretty old term, pretty old. From 1807, Thomas Young, who was a, a physics and engineering. So he was trying to, instead of writing a rolled phrase about a condition that he was applying in, a, in, a, in an iron, he was trying to bend an iron, and the iron was going back to the original position. So in that situation, he was, I don't want to write a whole phrase. I just summarize, I think, in a single word. So he created that word, resilience. So this came from engineers very, oops, what happened here? <coughs> okay. So this, uh, this word is very common in engineering, as I said, in physics. And I myself, I came from engineering. So I'm an engineer, not a... A civil engineer, I'm a, a telecommunications engineer, but I'm very uh, comfortable to speak about that thing. So, uh, Alain Kardec, he mentioned not directly this term resilience, because in 1857, 1860, this term is not so related to the psychology. It's more related, as I said, to the engineering. But he mentioned resilience in a different phrases inside the inside the inside the books inside the, the basic books of spiritism so one of the phrases that he mentioned about resilience not directly is this phrase right here that we can find in the the gospel according to spiritism chapter five so let's read together uh, god does not put a heavy burden on weak shoulders the burden is always proportional to the strength and the reward depends on the level of resignation and courage. Pretty straightforward here. But here we perceive another word here that it's, it's a brother of uh, resilience, resignation. If we see right here, Kardec mentioned about resignation. And I can include another brother for resilience, which is the resistance. So from your perspective, do you know how many times, you do not need to say because you know the answer, how many times the word resistance is presented in all the, all the books from Kardec? Can, you, can someone guess here? How many times? Five, 10, 100, resistance, not resilience, resistance. Resistance is about 100, around 100. And what about resignation? How many times do you think he mentioned about resignation? 300, 500, 200, around 200. And how many times he mentioned about resilience? More than both of those. Yes? Pick a number. 500. No, zero. Oh. That's what I said, because it's a, it's a word that was not used by the by the psychology or by the moral, you know? So that's the, so, but it's interesting because Kardec mentioned resilience in a different way. Okay, I, I'm gonna show you later another phrase for him that then you captured, I think. Okay, but let's make this difference between the resilience, uh, resistance, and resignation. So to make it clear, what is resistance? 
Resistance is to react. So resistance does not happen if something happened to you. If something does not happen to you, it will not happen. So it's like you push something. So if you push something, the, the object that you are pushing, it will force you back, right? That's reaction. So reaction is, the, is to react and remain unchanged. It's our strength, okay? It's reaction. So I can't summarize in a, in, a, in a phrase here. So if we keep up the fire, then the victory is ours. So keep it. So in sports, for example, when you are keep it, keep it, keep it, and then the, we are, are going to win. So that's reaction. We are reacting against something. Resignation. Resignation is related to understand and accept. So I'm resignated because I understood what happened, and now I'm accepting what's coming to me. So if you can summarize, res resignation is going to be acceptance. So it hurts less by understanding and accepting. So what about resilience? Resilience is to recover the original capacity or strength after some action or adversity. So it means recovery. So if I, if I broke my arm and then I'm capable on a playing sport, of course not, but I will be fix that thing and I will be stronger if I've got the, the resilience capacity. Okay? So if we can summarize in a phrase, stand up, clean the dust, and let's move forward. Any questions here with this difference here? So they're all brothers, but they are different, like any brotherhood. So good news is that in the Spiritism book, we've got Joana de Angelis. Joana de Angelis, uh, she is the Divaldos Francos. Divaldos Francos is a famous medium who wrote a lot of books, I think more than 50 books. 2,200? 2,200. 200 books. And uh, uh, his mentor is Joana de Angelis. Joana de Angelis, uh, she, she did uh, the psychological series of books. So there's about, I think, 12 books. Around 12 books about psychology related to spiritism. And she defines the resilience here in one of her books. Resilience is the lucidity of the conscience with, which overcomes bitterness, despair, and unhappiness. So look at that. A key word here is overcomes, right? It's a consequence of understanding his spiritual goals. So self-knowledge. What is my spiritual goal? What I'm doing here? For what I'm here? Which facilitates to accept why are we suffering here? We all suffer, right? And needing to be in rough levels of the evolutionary mechanism. We are all inside this evolutionary mechanism. The world is getting better. Despite the news is not presenting that thing, the world is getting better. If we come back 100 years back when Kardec wrote the book, the, the Book of Spirits, so slaves, it's a, it's a common thing, was accepted. 150 years only. So if you think we're getting better, the, uh, the women cannot vote less than 100 years back. The women now, the same rights. So we are getting better. We are getting better. Despite the news, we are getting better. But the news is just a small portion of the reality, right? So in the spiritism, we've got resilience. The term resilience is here. It's inside the spiritism. So uh, to retain those concepts that I, that I mentioned about resistance, resilience, and, uh, and uh, resignation, let me show you one thing. Remember the bridge that I presented in the first slide? First slide, if you pay attention to the first slide, there was a bridge, beautiful bridge, right? Beautiful. So this bridge, uh, does anyone here know the Washington State? Seattle, Tacoma. So this bridge 
in the 40s, 1940, she, uh, the, this bridge was open and it collapsed in less than four months. So I'm gonna show you the film. It's an actual film. There's no uh, illusions or something. It's, a, it's an actual film. Tacoma Bridge, Washington, opened only a few months ago, was built at a cost of over $6 million. But misfortune overtakes the great structure. These are some of the most amazing pictures ever recorded by a newsreel. The actual collapse of the world's third largest suspension bridge. Only a 35 mile an hour wind is blowing, but this apparently sets up a rhythmic swinging of the bridge, which increases with each swing. Finally, the swinging road and the suspension cables give way and plunge into the water below. Fortunately, the only casualties were a car stalled on the bridge and a dog. This is impressive, right? So a, bit, a bridge, very expensive one, a lot of engineers, a lot of workers in less than four months without any major winds, without any quakes, the bridge fell down. So what's the lessons learned from this bridge? So first of all, let's understand what happened to the bridge. What happened to the Tacoma Bridge? <laughs> Let me bring you some engineer concepts. First of all, it's the mechanical res uh, uh, resonance. Mechanical resonance, so everybody here you've got a natural frequency, everybody. Even this one, everything has a natural frequency. And you can calculate that. So the natural frequency is a particular frequency of a body. So if you vibrate close to, the, to, the, to this frequency, you're gonna accumulate energy. That's what happened with the bridge. Because of the strings, the cables that sustain the bridge, so the wind, was flowing in a frequency pretty close to the natural frequency of the bridge. And the bridge was accumulating energy, energy oscillating until it collapsed. That's what happened with the bridge. It's natural. It's no trick. There is no, uh, let's say, terrorism here. That's a natural phenomenon. It's the same phenomenon that happens with, I think most of you, when a singer, get a, a crystal glass and st start to sink and, uh, and the glass explode, right? This happened because the singer is singing in a, in a, in a, in a frequency close to the, to the natural frequency of the glass. It accumulates energy and explode. See? So it's a natural phenomenon. So how can we bring that thing for us as an example? So this case right here, where's the resilience here? Can someone here tell me where you can identify a resilience here in this case? Where's the resilience here? What? It's the whole project, right? The whole project collapsed. Imagine the engineers and the workers when they saw that thing. So we did spend, I don't know, how many years building that bridge, calculating the bridge, and now it collapsed. Imagine their mind in that situation. But they, uh, I think one of the major engineers of that, that, that bridge was already involved in a lot of bridges like that in Manhattan, uh, Brooklyn Bridge, I think, and Manhattan Bridge. He was one of the engineers there. So imagine his mind, what happened here? We did all the calculations and the, the bridge fell down. But they, let's see, let's understand the situation, let's recover, right? And now you see the bridge. That's nowadays, it's beautiful, right? Stronger than the, the original one and beautiful. 
So that's resilience. If you see the overall project and the engineers, they prove that the resilience is, is feasible as well. Okay? Any questions on the difference between resistance, uh, resilience, and resignation? No? So let's move forward. Okay, Marcio, you tell me what is resilience, but how can I develop my resilience? Tell me. That's what we need, right? Because you just tell me what is the resilience. I know I got a lot of cases, but how can we work? How can we work out and develop our resilience? What is the trick here? So as an engineer, we like to get a, a major problem and cut in small pieces. And then we integrated those pieces and solved the major problem. So let's cut this huge problem of resilience into three small pieces. One piece is the optimism. Another piece is the understanding. And another piece is the recovery capacity. Three pieces together, working together. So if you improve your optimism, if you improve your understanding, if you improve your recovery capacity, when you integrate them, you improve your resilience. Right? So let's understand the optimism. So optimism. Basically, what we can say about optimism? It's the exercise of reason of reason and faith. So when you start to study, when you start to understand what hap what is happening around us, why I'm here. So when you keep faith on God, you understand that God is here to support us, not to punish us. So believe on Him. So our life here is so short compared to the infinity, right? So short. As I mentioned, 150 years ago when Kardec started to, to write the, the books, so it was completely different. It's so short. So imagine a thousand years from now, a thousand years back. So it's infinity. So we need to exercise our faith, but understand what's, what's going around us, right? Confidence in life, that's important. So we've got a, in the, in the spiritism, we've got a, we know that our ev uh, evolution never goes back. We are always going up. So if you think that, if you consider that we are always going up, right now, we are in the best conditions for our evolution. Even if you don't like it, but it's in the best. Imagine the worst. So we are in the best right now. And we are going to be in the best in the next one, and so on. So confidence in life. We have all we need to develop our, our optimism, our, our uh, resilience. So all, all you need, it's here, now. So believe that God, that's the phrase that I presented in the first slide, does not give us a burden greater than our capacity. Is it difficult? Yeah, it's difficult sometimes to understand. But we need to practice. OK? Leonardo Pereira, it's a, a spiritist speaker. And I like that, uh, that phrase from him, where he, where he mentioned that the human faith, our human faith, in himself, what is that? It's a self-confidence. You need to trust on you. I'm good. I came from God. So if God is good, I am good as well. Why not? So in divine faith of God, giving us the, the absolute certainty we are not alone. So we are not alone. So think about you, any, any problem you had in the past. So do you think you are capable of solving that thing alone? Someone helped you to, to solve that problem. OK? So everything goes away, and our pains will soon be over. So 
let me bring, before we continue with that, let me bring Chico Xavier uh, is a Brazilian uh, medium who wrote more than 500 books. And he had this, this sign close to his bed. This also goes away. Pretty simple, right? Bad days will go away. Good days will go away as well. But remember that the bad days will go away, right? So what is faith? If you go back to Leonardo Pereira, faith is the certainty that the future holds something much better, right? We are getting better, so the future will be better for sure. It's the vision of the future life which glorifies the trials and atonements we are facing on earth. Everybody on earth is facing atonements and, uh, and uh, and proofs, right? Everybody. We are, we are not the privileged ones. It's a vision beyond which changes our behavior in the face of pain and affliction, and by changing us, transforms everything around us. That's faith, right? OK, any questions here about the optimism? How we develop the optimism? So let's see the next one. Understanding. That will need some kind of effort because you need to study, right? We need to study. We need to perform a self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is to understand our weakness and our strength. So let's go deeper inside us. Don't blame the others. Try to look at yourself. So if, if I'm angry with a situation, why I'm angry with that situation? Let's see one example. I'm driving the I-4 traffic jam. So I'm angry with that. Why I should be angry with that? You're not going to solve. But you need to go deeper inside you and think, why this thing is causing me this, this condition? And try to fix yourself. That's a self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is in the question 919 of the Spirit's book. So where uh, Kardec asks about what is going to be a, a, practical, a, a practical activity to improve. And uh, the Spirit's mentioned to him self-knowledge. Right? Self-knowledge is the key. Understand yourself. We are not perfect. So just go deeper inside you and... Why, why this thing is causing me? Why I'm so furious? Why I'm so happy? Why I'm so, I don't care. So those conditions you need to go deeper. Don't blame the others, please. Sometimes you're, it's our defense to blame the others. Oh, this person caused me that. No, don't blame the others. Try to understand why this person is causing you that thing. You, not him. A good thing here, I mentioned about the bridge, about the, about the natural frequency or resonance frequency. Try to identify your resonance frequency. What is yours? What makes me capture all the energy and explode at the end? Try to change that energy. Change that thing. This frequency, change that. Don't capture all the energy to explode at the end. So understanding the situation to overcome trials and atonements. You need to understand why, why God gave me that thing. Sometimes we don't know, but try to ask yourself. Try to ask inside you and see what is going to be the answer. Talk to your mentor. Everybody here has a mentor. Talk to him. Talk to him, it's free. It's free, you do not need to pay anything. Just call him. Talk to him and express, please help me on understanding that situation. The answer will come, believe me, will come if you got faith.
important thing here, uh, Emmanuel, as I mentioned, Chico Xavier is a medium who wrote more than 500 books, and his mentor was Emmanuel. Emmanuel, in one of the books, he wrote in the, in the, 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 the preface of the book, each creature with the feelings that characterize its intimate life emits specific energy and lives in the spiritual level he identifies himself. So it's the frequency, right? I'm in, uh, sending something outside. So you need to change that frequency depending on the situation. And this will identify yourself. Try to identify your frequency. So if something is bothering you, something is causing you some uncomfort, try to understand why it's that. So in other words, you are trying to identify your, your resonance frequency, your natural frequency, and try to change that. Understand the, the point. Recovery capacity. Let's talk about recovery capacity. As I mentioned here, elevate your thoughts. So don't look to the floor, look to the sky. If you look to the floor, your vision is like that. If you look to the sky, your vision will be like that, much bigger. That will clarify your, your mind. Elevate your thoughts, don't think it down, don't put it down, put it up. Apply the appropriate shock absorbers, that's the bridge. How did they solve that thing? They changed the, the natural frequency of the, uh, of the bridge by changing the project, putting some kind of uh, absorbers, springs, to change the, the natural frequency of the bridge. So apply that thing to you, some shock absorbers, some springs, to change your frequency. Okay, deviate the, the, the frequency that could cause you an explosion, a collapse. We always should have a plan B. Identify and execute a plan B. For every situation, there is a plan B. Every situation. So that's the reason we've got something between our ears. It's the brain. Think. What is the plan, what's the plan B to solve? It should be a plan B. Just think. <laughs> don't, be, don't be desperate. Identify the plan B. Think about, if you cannot identify, uh, take a rest, talk to your mentors, ask him, please give me, give me a chance with faith. The plan B will come to your mind, believe me. If I can give you a suggestion is that, I don't know if it, if it happens to you, but for me sometimes I was thinking in a problem when I'm going to the bed. And I leave a paper close to my, to my bed. In the middle of the night, I don't know, for some reason, a new idea comes to my mind. And I, okay, let me scratch that thing. Sometimes when I, when I, when I, when I forgot to put this paper, I remember the solution, but when I wake up in the next day, I don't know what I think. So keep that paper close to you because someone will help you. Uh, once we do this exercise, the prayer, we are changing our frequency that will connect to theirs because in order for us to talk to our mentor, we have to be connected. To be connected. The same frequency. That's what I'm talking later about, the radio frequency. So internal and external support. Internal means our support. We need to support ourselves. We cannot have someone studying the case for us. We need to study, we need to do the thing ourselves. And external support, we live in a society. We need to count on people to help us. But we need to understand the situation. Courage and resignation. Courage is that, okay, we've got a wave. We need to cross that sea with a huge wave. What you're gonna do? You're gonna put your back to the wave and run from the wave? No way. You need to go to the wave. You need to cross the wave. That's what a surfer does, right? See the wave? 
He enters in the wave and cross the wave. Easy. But he needs to have a courage to do that thing. When you see a wave, six feet, seven feet, when you see a wave like that, you need to have a courage, take a breath and go, right? So it's courage. And resignation, understand the situation. Accept the situation. Don't be furious with, uh, with the situation. It will not solve. Understand what I'm here. As I said, every situation we are facing here, it's the situation that God put in our way for us to get better. So believe on that. Meditation and prayer. Let me give a, a merchandising here. I think every Thursday, the last Thursday of the month, the, every, the last Thursday of each month, we've got a meditation practice here, right? Mm -hmm. Valdo is coordinating that. So uh, if you're interested, meditation is pretty good, right? It will improve a lot your, uh, your mind, your capacity of resilience. So if you don't know how to start a meditation, come here at the last Thursday of each month. It's a pretty, pretty nice study that they are presenting here. But let's just summarize the meditation. So if you think about meditation, is the, the, I cannot say art, is the effort to concentrate in something. So you can start small. I like to say the uh, uh, unidirectional meditation. Try to think in just one thing. So we call the, the anchor think. Like for example, a candle or a picture or a nice beach. So if you start to think on that thing and so a, new, a new thought will come to your mind, bring to the anchor. Think about the beach again, think about the candle. Try to practice that. And then you see you're gonna concentrate in something. Another suggestion is that start to concentrate in the things, the, the minor things, the small things that you're doing. For example, wash your hand. So concentrate, don't think about anything. Concentrate on washing your hand. That will give you concentration and meditation is a concentration. And then you clean up your mind. There's another meditation about, uh, analytical meditation, but that's uh, another step. But start with that, start small. Think big, start small. And prayer. Prayer, as I said, is our connection to God. It's our connection to our mentors. So use it. Why not? Use it. Sometimes I've got a friend who told me that I don't know how to pray. So do you talk to yourself? Then you know how to pray because you're talking to yourself. And at the end, you're talking to your mentor. So start to talk. Start to think. Start to talk to the, to the mentor. Start to talk. Express your thankful because you are here. So you are here, you are alive. So express your thankful and start to talk like you're talking to a friend. It's free. You do not need to pay any charges for that. No taxes for that. Just talk, think, right? So meditation and prayer, that will improve your, your uh, resilience. And as I like to say, as an engineer, I like to bring the comparison to the real world. We are, we are all a radio. We are a radio. So if you know the, if you heard about the, the, the pineal gland that we've got, it's a, it's a gland this size in the middle of the brain. The, the pineal gland is full of crystals. So when I first uh, heard about that thing, because I'm a, a telecommunication engineer, so a radio, an old radio, we've got crystals inside the radio. And the crystals are very useful for us to, to set up the, the station, set up the dial. Oh, it makes sense. So we've got crystals inside our, our pineal. So that should be some kind of relation. I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I didn't take any course in medicine, but I was reading something, I was studying something. That should be some kind of relation. So we are a radio. So, but it's up to us to find the right station. If you leave the, the radio as a broadband, it will capture everything, good stations and bad stations. So we need to change our frequency and get the right station. It's up to, it's up to us. I cannot do it for you. You cannot do it for me. 
It's up to me to change my station and think the right station, right? So let's see what uh, Torres Pastorino, is a spiritist writer as well, uh, mentioned about that. Our mind is a radio device which transmits our thoughts and receives others. However, we will only retain the thoughts we want. So that's the station, right? It is up to us to keep our mind on an elevated range of vibrations of kindness and love. Hence, we are only hit by identical thoughts. In this way, no thought of evil and illness can reach us because we change the station. We change our natural frequency. As I said to the, uh, about the bridge, we change the frequency. Now we are aligned with that and it's free. Once again, it's free. It's, depending only on us. So let's summarize here, let's review what we talk in terms of developing our resilience. Three blocks, right? Integrated. No one has priority on the others. They are all integrated. Optimism, understanding, and recovery capacity. What is behind each one? Optimism, it's a faith. Okay? As I said, understand the faith. Believe in God. Study. That's very, very important because without that thing, how can we know what's going on around me? I need to study that. And action, attitude. That's the third block. Recovery capacity. That's the action. I'm going to do that thing. I'm capable of doing that. Right? Believe in you. Self-confidence. Remember that in the first slide they presented a phrase from the same book, in the same chapter, by the way. So in the instructions from the spirits to suffer well or badly, it's up to us. Okay, no one will cause us to suffer, to suffer badly or well. It's only up to us. When facing sufferings, sufferings or obst obstacles, if you are able to place yourself above the situation, by managing and dominating the impulses of impatience, anger, and despair. Then you may say to yourself with satisfaction, I'm stronger than them. So you see Kardec mentioned the first phrase that I, that I presented in the first slide, something about resilience. And he also mentioned resilience here. Okay. I appreciate your attention. So hope that this lecture will be useful. Just keep in mind that three blocks, it's so easy, it's not so complicated. Thank you.